Welcome back to Econ 104, Introduction to Macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at unemployment. And really, okay, there's actually a lot more to unemployment than it seems. It's like, oh, okay, I hear this on the news from time to time. I know what unemployment is. There's, there's a bit more to it than that. And so all together as we get through this video, what are our goals? Well, our goals are going to be to first define unemployment. What do we mean by unemployment? Who gets counted in that? Who doesn't get counted in it? What fits underneath this broad kind of umbrella of the unemployed? We're then going to differentiate between some different types of unemployment and in those types of unemployment, take a look at long run versus short run or long term versus short term influencers or determinants types of unemployment. So that's our goals as we get through. As we work through this video, I'll be bringing in some data from the Canadian economy uh, over the time span that I have available to us to look at, and we'll kind of take a look at how unemployment has changed over time. Given the current situation we're in, given the situation with the great pandemic and COVID and everything going on with that, we get the chance to look at this massive change in unemployment and how that affects everything. Well, we'll see how that affects everything as we carry forward in the course, but for now we'll see kind of that just change, that massive deviation from our typical trends in unemployment. So let's jump over, let's take a look at our starting bit here, and that is let's define what we mean by unemployment. So by unemployment, how exactly do we measure unemployment? Well, in the unemployment, and let's talk about specifically our unemployment rate. Our unemployment rate is determined quite simply, and then we're going to introduce these terms, and we'll be like, okay, hey, we're going to have to define what those mean. So, yeah, okay, that's where we're going. Unemployment rate, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be determining the number of unemployed. So, hey, how many people are unemployed altogether? And that's going to be something we actually have to define what we mean by that. And how many people are unemployed versus how many people are in our labor force? And again, something else we'll have to define. So number of unemployed versus number in the labor force. And then we want to have this as a percent. So we can go times 100%. Keep in mind, if we omit this times 100%, really the only difference is instead of working this out and getting something like 3%. If we omitted that times 100%, we would have just gotten 0.03. Either are perfectly acceptable. Keep in mind as we go through our quizzes and our exams, I will always specify how I want you to report it. Typically speaking on the exam situation, typically I'll say record it as a decimal to however many decimal places I want. So just something to keep in mind. Typically, in our exam situation, we will ignore that bit and just report it as a decimal. Okay, so let's talk about what we mean by unemployed and let's talk about what we mean by the labor force. And in order to do so, let's start off by talking about our labor force. So our labor force is made up of individuals 15 years of age and older. So we'll just go 15 plus. And so the labor force is people 15 years of older who are either working. So, hey, if you're working, you are employed. Or actively looking for work. Actively looking. And that is what we would call our unemployed. Anybody who is 15 years of age and older who is actively looking for work. And actively looking for work, this can be that, hey, you're actually trying to find a job, you're out there, you're actually wanting to work, you just can't find one as of this point. It could be a situation where you were temporarily laid off. And that is, you know that your job is there waiting for you, you know you're gonna get hired back on in a week's time, but given a little bit of a business slowdown, you've been laid off for a week. So hey, during that week period, you are unemployed. That is, you're expecting to go back to work. So, big thing to keep in mind with that is that as we are talking about the unemployed or the labor force, really, right, labor force would be working or not working, but not just not working, they're looking for work, they want to work, meaning that, hey, 
What about somebody who's retired? Are they part of the labor force? Are they unemployed? No. No, no, no. A retired individual, if they're fully retired, well, they're not working. They're also not looking for work. So that would mean that they're not employed. They're not unemployed. They're just not part of our labor force at all. Similarly, what if we had a student? What if we had a student who was deciding, right? Some of you maybe have part-time jobs. Some of you might have full-time jobs while you're doing this. Some of you might be taking a full course load and being like, hey, you know what? I'm devoting all my studies. This is where all my efforts are going right now. I don't want a job right now. If you're one of those students where it's just, hey, I'm devoting to my studies. I don't want a job right now. Well, you're not unemployed. You're just not part of the labor force. You would not be part of this unemployment rate because you would not fit into this unemployed category. You would not fit into this labor force category. Right? Some other examples would be those who are disabled. Those who are on disability collecting social benefits, collecting something like that, who are unable to work for one reason or another. And right, clearly there are certain people who have certain disabilities who are perfectly able to work for sure. But of course, there are those that render certain individuals unable to work. In that case there, you're not unemployed. You're not part of the labor force. So you would not be included, um, included in the calculation of this metric. Final example, final example, and there's many more we could do. We could take a look at stay-at-home parents. Right, so if one of the parents, or maybe, well, usually one parent, if one parent stays at home to raise the kids, if one of these parents stays at home to raise the kids, they are not unemployed, they are not calculated as part of this unemployment rate, they are just simply not part of the labor force. That is, they're not actively looking for work. They have probably more than a full-time job ahead of them in being that stay-at-home parent raising the kids and taking care of the household. So in that case there, some examples of individuals who are not working, but because they're not actively looking, they're not part of the labor force, and they're not part of this unemployed. So really all this to really get at when we're talking about the unemployment rate, we're taking a look at the ratio of those who are actively looking for work but can't find it. That's what we'd call these unemployed versus everybody in the labor force being everybody who's working and everybody who's actively work, trying to work. And that's what we would have as our unemployment rate. So the idea, a bit of background behind that. We also have a few other metrics to take a look at. So the unemployment rate being the first one. The next one we would want to take a look at is something known as the participation rate. The participation rate. And what we're looking at with our participation rate is, well, how many people in our population, in our country, are wanting to work, are wanting to participate in the wage economy. And so what we would look at in this case here is we would be taking a look at our labor force. I'm just going to abbreviate that to LBR for labor. We'd be taking a look at our labor force to, uh, with relation to our entire population. And then again, typically I'll just ask you to report it as a decimal, but then times 100% to get it as a percent. And thus we get our participation rate showing us, hey, the proportion of people that are trying to work or are working with relation to the overall population. We then get a funny one here. Our next one, our next metric we're going to look at is our employment rate. And the employment rate, well, if we want to compare and contrast it, the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate is, hey, how many of people, how many people are unemployed versus that labor force? And then again, times 100 if we wanted it as a percent. Well, in the employment rate, many people just knee-jerk go, hey, hey, okay, we would be taking a look at the number of employed versus, right, hey, unemployed versus the labor force. So employment rate, the employed versus the labor force. But no, 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 that's not what we're doing here. The employment rate is taking a look at how many people are employed 
with respect to our population. That is how much of our population on whole is employed. And people get really caught off by that. They go, what? Why? Why would we, why would we do the unemployment rate this way and then the employment rate a different way? Well, okay, think about why we don't really want to do them both the same way. If we had, just as we used in that previous case, an unemployment rate of 3%, well, we could just infer the opposite of that. That is, we could work out the employed over the labor force as being 97%, right? And that would have to be because the labor force is the employed plus the unemployed. That is everybody working plus everybody actively looking for work. So, hey, these two would always have to equal 100, meaning uh, this wouldn't really give us anything interesting. We could always infer it from this one there. So in that sense, yeah, not a valuable metric, which is why we have this employment rate, which is telling us in this sense here, okay, how what percentage of our population is employed? What percentage of our overall population is actually working, actually earning an income? So employment rate, another metric. The three we will kind of utilize, really, the big one we will utilize as we move on through the semester being that employment rate for sure. We can put a few stars beside it being like, yeah, yeah, this is the big guy. That's the one we'll be carrying forward with. These guys, they're important. We'll be taking a look at them a little bit, but not nearly as relevant as our unemployment rate. So let's take a look at really the, this unemployment rate and how it's kind of looked at in Canada over the last little while. So just to give you kind of a heads up as to kind of where we are at with that, if we were to take a look at the unemployment rate, what else do we want to take a look at? Well, let's also take a look at our employment rate. And then let's take a look at our participation rate as well. So Statistics Canada collects this data monthly and publishes it. We can take a look at the difference between these, between December, and let's go back two years time, December 2018. And then we'll take a look at it again in December 2020. So we'll take a look at really what's happened to these metrics as we've moved through time. So starting off 2018, our unemployment rate was hovering at about 5.8%. Fast forward to 2020. And that's sitting now at about 8.8%. Right? And you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's, that's quite a jump. That actually isn't even the worst of it. During the height of the COVID pandemic, when everything was shut down, we were reaching unemployment rates of about 13 14%. So the unemployment rate has considerably dropped since the height of the pandemic around early summer, uh, late spring of 2020. <clears throat> Our employment rate, what does that look like by contrast? Well, the employment rate was 61.6% in December 2018 compared to 59.3. So, hey, we witness the unemployment rate goes up, the employment rate goes down. But notice the different magnitudes, right? Different magnitudes because, well, we're looking at different metrics there. Participation rate, well, that guy went from about 65%, and, well, really, it stayed at about the same. So, really, I should we can be a little bit more, a little bit more precise, because it did change a little bit. It was at 65.3, down to 65. So, slight change in our participation rate. Really, what that tells us is a drop in the participation rate means that we had some discouraged workers. We had people who were employed, they became unemployed, they were looking for work, looking for work, and then they decided, hey, you know what, I'm done looking for work. I'm not going to be employed. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to become a full-time student, right? I'm just going to exit the labor force altogether, and or I'm going to decide to do something informal, or and something's happening that I'm taking early retirement, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just not part of the labor force any longer. Hence the drop in our participation rate. So these are our overall average 
rates across the Canadian economy over that two-year time period to look at. What I really want to bring our attention to, however, is that there's actually very big differences in this depending on the age group that we look at. And in fact, it even is very um, different amongst genders as well. Different unemployment rates amongst men versus women. And we'll take a look at a few graphs to highlight that shortly. But let's take a look at the same three metrics here. And I'm just going to abbreviate them as UR for the unemployment rate. Um, actually, you know what? Well, there's a U for the unemployment rate. We'll do ER for the employment rate and PR for the participation rate. And in this case here, what we're looking at is the unemployment, the employment, and the participation rate of those aged 15 to 24. So we're going to break it down by age group. And again, we'll take a look at December 2018 versus December 2020. So let's just list it out for December 2018 first. We had a unemployment rate of 10.7%. So what we see is that this younger group category, they had an unemployment rate almost twice as much as the overall general unemployment rate. Their employment rate was sitting at 56 point, uh, what was that, 56.7. So we see they had a lower employment rate as well. And they had a participation rate of about 63.5%. So we see they also had a lower participation rate, which makes sense given this age grouping. You would expect more of this age grouping to be deciding to be students rather than engaging in the economy. Okay, how has this changed into the height of, well, not the height, but into December 2020? Well, our unemployment rate spikes quite a bit. It goes all the way up to 17.8%. That is all the way almost up to 18%. So massive increase in this younger grouping unemployment. The employment rate, well, the employment rate drops as expected. It goes down to 52.1%. And our participation rate, well, our participation rate stays about the same, 63.4%. So not much change going on there. We had about the same amount of people engaging in the economy overall, same amount of people wanting to work, looking for work. That is really all we witnessed was a swell in the number of unemployed. We didn't really see much of a change in the labor force in that case there. What about as we look at older age groups? That is, what if we take a look at, we'll go again, unemployment, the employment rate, and the participation rate. Let's go up an age group. Our next age group would be 25 to 54. In this category, what ended up happening over our time period we're looking at? Well, back in December of 2018, we had a 4.9% unemployment rate. We had an employment rate of 83%. That is most people in this age grouping, right? Four-fifths of them were employed. A participation rate, we had a participation rate of 87%. That is almost nine out of 10 people in this age group were participating in the economy. That is, they were either employed or they were unemployed. They were part of the labor force. Let's fast forward. Let's take a look at how this changed. Well, at the height of things, this jumped up to 7%. So, okay, unemployment in this 25 to 54 year old category, sure, it spiked. We see it wasn't nearly as drastic though. Employment rate, well, if unemployment went up, we'd expect employment to go down. Yeah, yeah, that guy went down to 81.3. And then finally, our participation rate, what did that guy do? Uh, again, it hardly changed. 87, that was technically 87.2, and participation rate actually went up. It actually went up to 87.5%. That is, we had more people participating in the economy. They entered given this, uh, given this situation. But mind you, this could also just be changing sociodemographic groups as well, not necessarily as a result of the pandemic they're entering. Okay, last category to take a look at. Last one, so again, unemployment, employment, and participation rate. This last category is our 55 plus category. 
And in this year, what did we witness? We had a 5.2% unemployment, but we had an employment rate of only 35%. So hey, out of the population of people 55 years or older, eh, only a minority of them are actually working, just over a third. Participation was about 37%, right? So almost, what, two-fifths of people 55 and older were actually participating in the labor force. Fast forward, fast forward to 2020, and what are we looking at? Well, we have an 8% now. So again, a bit of a jump, but not nearly as drastic as that youth category. Employment rate, what did that do? Went from 35 down to 34.3. So not a massive change there. So from a participation rate of 37% and to a 37.3%. So again, not much change there in the participation rate. Big things that we look at as we look at this is changes in our unemployment. And we see that amongst the different demographic groupings, we get drastically different changes. That is primarily amongst this younger age group where we have the biggest increase in unemployment. And if you think about kind of what happened in the shutdown, it was a lot of the service industry, a lot of that service sector, which is primarily un or low skilled work and primarily taken by people with lower education, the younger age groups amongst us. In that sense there, it's not that big of a surprise that unemployment spiked amongst that age group. That is not to say that, hey, this 2% spike in unemployment wasn't drastic or this almost 3% wasn't drastic either, but definitely amongst this younger age group, the hardest hit given the pandemic, given the situation up before us. And then, of course, the reported unemployment rate, 5.8 to 8.8. .8. What we see hiding within this is very different ones as we break it down by demographic. If we want to go looking into this farther, we can also, it's also collected and reported unemployment rates, employment rates, participation rate by sex. So, hey, males in this age grouping, females in this age grouping, and then combined. We can also get it by sex, by demographic, by education level. So, hey, high school. Uh, university diploma, university degree. And then if we are looking at just more recent years, we can also look at post-university degree. Let's take a jump over. Let's take a look at some of that. And it's not pretty, but what we can do, I'll walk you through it as we take a look. Just to warn you, it will get pretty bright as I jump screens because it is a white background. And we'll take a look at what's happening. I'll kind of walk you, talk you through what's happening, what exactly we're looking at as we take a look at the graphs here. So let's jump and take a look. Okay, so here we have a whole bunch of variables and they have these ugly names like unemp15. Well, this here is just the code that we have for the unemployment rate of everybody 15 years of age and older. We can take a look at it with result of education. So let's take a look at just generally speaking, high school. So 15 plus both sexes, if you have high school versus if you have a post-secondary diploma versus if you have a degree. We have high school unemployment, 15 years or older. So we see that, hey, people with only a high school diploma, they have the highest rates of unemployment and were drastically hit by the most recent pandemic. We see the, hey, we have just the diploma, so post-secondary diploma. That's our orange line there. That's in the middle. We see kind of the hits it's had, right? So right about here, this spike, this was the 08, 09. That was the financial crisis. And we see the spikes in unemployment and then kind of that slow trend back down before our current pandemic and the spike. And then we have unemployment based off of those who have a full on university college degree. And we see that those typically have been the lowest levels of unemployment, still getting a hit during the pandemic, but not nearly as high, or sorry, during the 0809 financial crisis, but not nearly as high. And then same as we moved on through the pandemic. So notice, hey, even those with a university degree, their level of unemployment is still on par with those with a high school education, right? Pre-pandemic. 
So we see kind of the benefit there of human capital of the higher skill set in your employability as we move through. We can take a look at a few different things. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but we can compare, let's suppose we want to compare degree males 15 plus to degree females 15 plus. And again, we see there the difference in this case here, it kind of goes back and forth as we go through time, right? Over here in about 08, 07, we saw that typic, uh, that short for that short period of time, hey, the degree male unemployment rate fell below, uh, but typically male unemployment, no, I'm sitting a little bit higher than female unemployment. And we see that over a good stretch of the time, fairly stable. We see the impact of 08, 09, and then that slow transition back down as unemployment continued to fall, and then boom, our most recent spike yet again. So this unemployment data exists, it's freely accessible. It's just on Statistics Canada if you want to. It's there to download, to play, a look, uh, to play around with, to take a look at yourself. Uh, here, just wanted to show kind of a few ideas as to what's happening with unemployment, a few different things we can look at, and the impacts of unemployment based off of education level and gender. So that does us for our first video on unemployment. What we looked at so far was just kind of our overview of the metrics. What was the unemployment participation rate, employment rate, how these are determined, differences between them. And then we did a quick kind of overview as to what unemployment looks like in Canada for some different age groups, different education levels over time. In the next video, we still got one more on unemployment. We're going to get more into short-term versus long-term impacts on unemployment and importantly, the relations between unemployment, short-term, long-term unemployment, and GDP, our level of output, expenditure, income altogether. If you had any questions on this video, feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to comment below, post on the D2L Frequently Asked Questions, or shoot me an email. Thanks, and until next time.